Hello, my name is Lauren. My friend, Professor Nabil Jabor from Lebanon, is an author, lecturer, and expert on Muslim culture. I invited Dr. Jabor to read his book, Unshackled and Growing, for you, one small section at a time. A PDF version of the book in English is available to you for free on the website friendshippathways.com. You may also access past episodes there. I present to you the episode, Two Ways of Living. There are two ways of living. One of my favorite surahs in the Quran is Al-Fatiha. To Muslims, all Fatiha is as important as the Lord's Prayer is to Christians. In the surah, which is recited in ceremonial prayers and on many other occasions, there's a prayer that says, Ihdina sirat al mustaqim, guide us on the straight road. As sirat is an ancient Arabic word that is translated in the Quran as road, path, or way. The prayer lead us or guide us on the straight road should not be the prayer of Muslims only, but of every person who desires to have a deep intimacy with God. How can we move on that right path or right road or right way? I believe there are two options. One way is to follow the ladder mentality, worshiping God out of duty, fard, and assuming that we are satisfying him through our good works and our righteousness. Al-Birr wal-Ihsan. Some Muslims imagine this straight road as a bridge over a river of fire, which is as narrow as a hair and as sharp as a sword's edge. The other way is to worship God out of love instead of duty. To understand the difference between these options, consider these illustrations. Some years ago, a family went to the airport in a small American city to meet their friends who were arriving in the last flight. When they reached the airport, they found that the plane would be 90 minutes late. So this family of four, a father, a mother, and two children decided to wait at the airport. The daughter was about five years old and the boy was a toddler who was just learning how to walk. The little girl wanted to play on the descending escalator as they waited because there was hardly anyone at the airport at that time her father allowed her to try to climb the descending escalator as he stood behind her, helping her up. For about 15 minutes, she tried unsuccessfully to climb the descending escalator until she got bored and stopped playing. People from all religions who have a ladder mentality, who are motivated by duty, by fard in Arabic, and by a desire to practice righteousness, al-birr wal-ihsan, to earn God's acceptance. They are metaphorically speaking, trying to climb an impossible ladder. They are stuck climbing day in and day out, every day of their lives. Secular people tend to go up slowly on that impossible ladder. Secular Muslims tend to be lax in their practice of religion because they think that God does not demand a great deal. Committed fundamentalists, on the other hand, tend to exert themselves as they try hard to climb that impossible ladder. The sad thing, though, is that both groups, secular and fundamentalists, are not sure whether they can ever make it to the top or not. Only if God bestows his mercy on them and pluck them off the ladder as they go through the process of death, can they make it into paradise? Let's return to that family at the airport. They went up to the second floor, the departure level. In those days before 9-11, people could walk all the way to the gates to meet their friends. On the way to the gate, 
was a moving walkway about 50 meters long. The father wanted to play with his little boy who was learning to walk. He asked his wife to place the son at the start of the moving walkway. And then he went to the end of the walkway. The father looked at his little boy and with a big smile and wide open arms, he called his son by name and told him, come. The little boy looked at his dad, smiled and started walking toward him on the moving walkway. He was wobbly and fell down. So the father called out to him and with a big smile said, it's okay, get up, come. When the boy heard the voice of his dad and saw his smile and wide open arms, he got up, stopped crying and started walking toward his dad again. After a short time, the boy stopped walking and stood staring at a bright yellow sign. He forgot that his dad existed, yet he was still carried toward him by the moving walkway. Then he heard his dad calling him. He remembered that his dad was there and he started to walk toward him once again. The first scenario, the descending escalator, is a ladder mentality. A person is motivated by duty or fard and ends up in shackles. The second scenario, the moving walkway illustrates life with Jesus as he moves us along the straight road. Notice that being on the moving walkway requires both discipline and grace. Discipline is necessary. The little boy must practice walking and using his muscles. Life on this moving walkway is not lazy, but there's also grace on the moving walkway. Even when the little boy fell down, even when he forgot the purpose of being on the moving walkway, he was still being carried by grace. My friend, where are you? Are you tired of climbing a descending escalator? Are you attracted to the moving walkway? In the next sections, we will look at how to get on the moving walkway and how to continue moving forward on it.